Hey there, Mesa Nation, and hello to everyone joining us here today, where we'll be bringing you up to date on all the critical highlights and blips that have occurred thus far in the very young 2017 MLB season. My name is Aaron Witten, and I'm Ryan Donahoe, and we'll be your hosts for Touch Base as per usual. Today, as said before, uh, we're going to be taking some hacks hitting three topics, with the first being the in the hole or the early season outlook thus far, the on deck being surprises and breakdowns, and thirdly, the at bat, our infamous outraged and rampage segment. So let's get right into this one. All right, so we'll go into the in the hole spot. Um, the early season outlook so far. So the World Series champion Cubs are six and six. I'm sure much to your delight. A uh, little, I mean, it's 12 games. A little bit of a surprise though. Obviously, they're the favorite to win the World Series. They're fourth in the NL Central right now, so they're definitely going to. Uh, they have some work to do, but I, I think they'll probably be fine. Uh, I'm sure you're happy, but we'll see what happens in the rest of the year. <clears throat> the hometown Washington Nationals are seven and five. Decent start, I'd say about what could be expected, maybe slightly below. Um, Murphy and Harper are raking, uh, doing great. Trey Turner's on the 10-day DL, uh, which is not ideal, obviously. Uh, he's a two-hole hitter, they're a dynamic shortstop. Uh, we hope to get him back out there soon. But he's been, he's been taking batting practice and uh, running some sprints, and he looks pretty strong. Uh, Boston Red Sox, also 7-5. and five. The other... Uh, the other fan here for the Red Sox. Um, Mitch Moreland and Chris Sale, though, a little bit to talk about about them. I know you had some things to say, so so go ahead. Yeah, so in our last episode, I you know I was a little bit bullish on Chris Sale so far. Mm -hmm. He has 29 strikeouts in 23 innings. His ERA is below two. You know, he's pitched three starts with the Red Sox so far. And then Mitch Moreland set a Red Sox record. He hit nine doubles in his first 12 games. The offense has been a little bit below league average, but the pitching has been good. And then Fernando Abad coming into the season, we were talking about his arbitration eligibility. He should have been non-tendered, and he's kind of in John Farrell's doghouse. He's only seen two innings so far in the young season, so that's something to take a look at. Yeah, uh, as I said, obviously being a GM, I knew Chris Sale would be a good signing. So <laughs> looking, it's looking good for me so far, but you know, I'm not going to rub it in. Sure. So next we'll move on to our on deck segment. So surprises and breakdowns so far in the very young 2017 MLB season. So this is probably a bit surprising to us, Ryan. Uh, the Toronto Blue Jays have started the season 2-10, and 10, Mark Shapiro's club. Uh, so I guess my question to you is, uh, is it time to hit the panic button? Uh, I, I don't like the panic button thing. I don't get that whole thing. Like, What does that mean if you hit the panic button? It's not good. So no, 2-10 and 10 is not good. I wouldn't be happy. Um, I wouldn't say that their chances to make the playoffs are totally out the window, but uh, if I were the Toronto Blue Jays and I were saying, hey, could I start 2-10, and 10? would you like that? I would say no. So I guess, yeah, a little bit of a panic button. But they do play in a hard division. At uh, least you yeah, got the, you know, the Blue Jays, obviously. Mm -hmm. They were good last year, not good this year, the team we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Orioles are always good. You know, they got yeah. Trumbo, yeah. Uh, Davis at first base. Adam the Rays Jones. have under the radar pitching, you know, that yeah. they're probably going to deal with the yeah. deadline, and then, of course, the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, yeah, whoever they are. Yes. Yeah, doesn't matter. So uh, we'll throw the panic button aside and just discard it for the rest of this <laughs> episode. So I guess the next question is um, Byron Buxton. He was a former top prospect, number one overall, very heralded. Um, he's kind of, you know, hit it slow. He's hit the ground slow. So w what's your take on uh, Byron Buxton? Well, there is nothing slow about him, though, because that's definitely his best, <laughs> his best attribute is his speed. Uh, he just can't seem to get many hits. You know, he doesn't hit for average, doesn't hit for power, and he doesn't get many walks either, so he just kind of gets out all the time, which is not the uh, not the goal of Major League Baseball. So I don't, I don't know what they can do with him. He plays a great center field. Um, he's fast. He's athletic. Maybe the more he sees Major League pitching, the better, uh, the better he gets, but definitely no time to give up on him now. Uh, he's probably only been in the majors for a total of, I don't know, maybe 60 games or something like that uh, going back to last year. Uh, maybe he'll pick it up. I hope he does, but uh, I don't know. Just underwhelming start so far. Obviously he has the potential because he was rated yeah. number one overall by you know Baseball America, Baseball Prospectus, mm -hmm. MLB.com, so he has the traits. Yeah. So the question that we focus on a lot of the time is whether that's going to be able to translate over yeah. to you know MLB success. He was good in the minors. Yeah. So that's you know it's a good question going forward. And then of course Jose Abreu, infamously slow starter like Mark Teixeira was for the New York Yankees. Uh, he's on my fantasy roster, so yeah. I can't say I'm very pleased yeah. with how he's done so far. I don't know about you, Ryan, but maybe this is a time to buy a lot. You know, buy low on the guy because he's going to start to heat up as the yeah. season goes on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's actually interesting. I was watching a game the other day, and uh, I forget who the announcers were, but they said that they thought Jose Abreu would be the one guy to stay at the trade deadline. 
and that the White Sox would try and build around him, which is interesting to me. So we'll see. Obviously, they have a great farm system with all of the uh, prospects they took from the Nationals this past offseason. But uh, it'll be interesting. I don't know Jose Abreu. He can get back to that his rookie year, which was incredible. Uh, we'll see going forward. And then we've got Matt Harvey coming back from thoracic outlet syndrome, who's actually pitched really well. James Shields, who was dealt at the beginning of last season. He had a horrendous start with the San Diego Padres. Even worse with the uh, White Sox last yeah, season. Yeah. And then CC Sabathia, who the Yankees picked up his uh, option. He's actually been pretty good as well. And then to your point, this is probably where you can hit best, uh, Ryan, because he's on your fantasy roster. Yeah. Freak man, Jonas Cespedes, yeah. on pace for 75 home yeah. runs. So realistically, is this sustainable for the rest of the season? I don't know if it's sustainable, but I'm certainly reaping the benefits of it so far. Interesting, actually, I have to say uh, another point. Um, Last episode, or one or two episodes again, I was ragging on my catchers. Little do I know, I now have the number one and number two ranked catchers on my team in JT Real Muto and Matt Weider. So they both are having great starts. Uh, Jonas Cespedes is having a good start. Uh, Ozuna of the uh, Marlins is having a great start. So my fantasy team's looking okay. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm one and one, but I think I've got some potential there, so we'll see. Uh, finally, uh, like we said, the at the at bat now. Uh, after we've got all warmed up for the outrage and rampage, um, we mentioned uh, Trey Turner earlier, uh, out on a ten day DL with a hamstring injury. His backup, Stephen Drew, the first game he played, uh, replacing him, had a monster game. Uh, I think four RBIs, um, four hits as well. I don't know what it was, but it it was a good game. I'm telling you. The following game, uh, running to first base, he also pulls his hamstring. And this, this one much worse than Trey Turner. So I understand hamstring injuries are common, and uh, I get that, but they're also probably the most or the easiest injury to prevent. It's just you got to stretch and you got to hydrate. So I don't know what the Nationals are doing out there. It's getting hotter. Um, if their next shortstop goes down, they're going to be down to their fifth option. So uh, we'll see how that works. Hopefully they just start stretching and start drinking some water. Maybe the training staff should get on those guys. Trey Turner, when you come back, you better hydrate. That's all I'm saying. If I, if I see anybody else with a hamstring injury, I'm going to be angry. Yeah, maybe they take an acrobatics lesson. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what it is, but I'll, I'll teach them how to stretch if they, if they need it. Famous words of gold medalist uh, yeah. Ryan Donahoe yeah. in Nationals GM. Triple jump, yeah. <laughs> that triple jump. It's not gymnastics. <laughs> and so lastly, um, my uh, outrage rampage, we just talked about him, Jose Abreu. Jose, come on, man, you're killing me at first base. That's my position you're supposed to be hitting. He's hitting 186 to start the year. Zero home runs, only five RBIs. I gotta ask myself what's going on. I drafted this guy in my first five picks. You're making me look like a dummy, Jose. Come on. He's gonna need to ride the bench uh, in in terms of uh, you know fantasy baseball just because he's not hitting right now. But I mean, I'd rather have Madison Bumgarner eligible at first base because the guy hit two home yeah. runs on opening day, and Jose just can't hit anything right now. Yeah, uh, I don't know what's going on with him, but we'll see. Madison Bumgarner playing first base would be interesting, though. Oh, I would yes. like to see it. Uh, but in closing, our fun fact of the day, as everybody loves, uh, the oldest Major League Baseball franchise, the Cincinnati Reds, formerly Cincinnati Red Stockings, a little strange there, were founded in 1869. 1869 back there, way before... It's a while ago. Probably, that's definitely before basketball was probably even invented. So, just a little thing there. Anyway, so that wraps up our show for the day. Uh, we hope you all enjoyed it, and thank you all for tuning in. Uh, my name is Ryan Donahoe. And I'm Aaron Witten. And we'll see you next time. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Touch Base. Yeah, watch us on YouTube every week. Uh, tune in to channel 8.1 at 9.30 every day. And of course, to all your friends, and thank you for watching Touch Base.